You're listening to the Sisters in Loss podcast, a faith-based grief and loss podcast for black women, where you will hear stories of miscarriage, infant loss, stillbirth, and infertility to learn there is a testimony in tragedy. You will learn how to heal, gain clarity, find hope and peace, and turn your pain into your purpose after loss. I'm your host, Erica M. McAfee. Welcome to episode 70 of the Sisters in Lost podcast. In today's episode, we have Ashley K. Pittman, who shares her multiple loss story, including losing twins and how to save your marriage after loss. Ashley is the founder of Ashes to Beauty and the wife and mom of two amazing boys. Her mission is to help women protect their marriages after pregnancy loss. Before her boys, Ashley lost a set of twins, a boy and a girl, at seven months pregnant. Eight months after having them, she then ended up having a miscarriage at eight weeks. After such a loss, her marriage started to suffer, and they were so close to separating permanently. Ashley and her husband learned the hard way that when and women grieve differently, and in this episode, she shares what she has learned and how she is helping other women and couples save their marriages after loss. Here is Ashley K. Pittman. So welcome, Ashley, to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to begin with you sharing a little bit about yourself and what you do. Well, I see here. Where do I want to begin? Well, I currently I work outside the home, currently working at a hospital as an office manager. But as of right now, I'm also trying to build a community where I'm able to help other women be able to share their story, build their confidence and kind of help them nurture their marriage after a pregnancy loss and just kind of be in that voice to let them know that they're not alone and that it is possible to, you know, be able to make it through after a pregnancy loss. And I currently, myself, I have two boys, uh, William and Champ. William is six and, and Champ is five. And they come after me losing two babies myself. I had a boy and a girl that passed away in 2009 and shortly after birth. And after them, I also suffered three additional uh, miscarriages. And my last miscarriage was uh, last August. So, but in between August and December of last year, I was delivered. And it was an absolutely remarkable, remarkable um, experience. So that's how I'm here today to be able to start sharing my story and, and be that voice. Awesome. So let's go back. Take us back on your journey to motherhood and just go through your law story. Okay. Well, originally, I had been told that it would be hard for me to conceive. And I refused to be labeled. And me and my husband continued to try. And we got pregnant with the twins, REA, which is my daughter. And then my son was William Jr. I was seven months pregnant and was my first pregnancy. And what I was feeling now that I know now, I was, I had begun to cramp in my back, in my back, like the lower, lower half of my abdomen. And two weeks prior to having that sensation, they had told me what I was feeling at the time was ligament pain. So I figured it was ligament pains. And I remember taking Tylenol and kind of went about my morning, but it kind of continued to get worse. But it wasn't like excruciating. And by the time I realized it was contraction, that my contractions was five minutes apart. And then we got to the hospital immediately. And at that time, I was close to being fully dilated by the time I got to the hospital. And they told me we had to rush and be delivered. So shortly after they were born, they didn't survive. And mainly because one, they were preterm, they were twins, and that the tubing that was available at the time was not small enough to be able to help them. And they passed a little little bit later. So as you can imagine, that was very traumatizing to me and my husband. And while trying to get through that, we really just wanted to be able to have another baby. And then after we had lost the twins. I got pregnant eight months later. And then uh, that pregnancy ended eight weeks later. Yeah. So then what happened after that? Probably about six months later, we ended up getting pregnant with William. 
had William, and then Champ was born. Um, I got pregnant with Champ when William was 11 months old. Champ's story is a whole journey. When I was pregnant with Champ, they wanted to terminate Champ because they discovered a tumor on his lung that was pushing over his heart. And they told me that he could either pass away in utero or he could not, once he was born, that he could pass away after he was born. So they wanted me to, you know, just, you know, think about terminating him. And I'm like, again, there's that label. No, like, no, you're not. No, you're not doing that. So me and my husband kind of stuck to our guns and I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And God told me, no, absolutely not. And I said, God, no, you would not give me this pregnancy or this baby or get me this far to only take this baby away from me again. And he did it. Champ came out fine, perfect, absolutely amazing. And then when he was one, he had uh, his lower left ha- half of his left left lung removed. But to this day, Champ does not have any issues. You couldn't even tell Champ had any issues. The only how you even know that he had issues was because of the scar that he has on his on his body. So that's little bit of champ's story and then after champ i had another miscarriage and i lost i lost that baby by accident i was, we was in a car accident with champ around champ's third birthday and i lost that baby because of that and then last august i miscarried just for whatever reason <laughs> wow so, so yeah so that's a little bit in a nutshell like i said i'm i'm am writing a book that will be released in January 2019 that kind of goes more in depth of kind of the collection of events because everything happened so close together. And I still be like, how the heck <laughs> am I even saying? <laughs> right, right. So let's talk about your recurrent losses and really how that impacted your faith in God and then also your relationship with your husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. When we lost the twins, I, my faith was is non-existent. Like I was angry, I was hurt, I was upset, and I kept, you know, I would question God. I'm like, why? Because you know, I was raised by my grandmother, and my grandmother raised me and my sisters, and my mom wasn't around. So I'm like, you know, I want a family, and then when I get a family, it, it goes away. But I didn't, I didn't understand. I'm like, I did not understand. I was so hurt and just so upset and I remember just going to this very deep depression and I mean I felt like I was in this dark hole that I could not get out of and then while I was going through that me and my husband got disconnected because he wanted me to feel better I didn't know how to feel better I wanted him to feel better so our connection our communication was like I don't know it was like I felt like he was dragging me for me to feel better but I, I wasn't you know, responding. Like I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know how to help myself. I didn't know how to help him. Then it got to the point where I felt like he was moving faster than I was. You know, I'm like, well, man, I, I felt really alone. I'm like, am I just doing this by myself now? Like, do he not hurt as much as I do? Why isn't he, you know, grooving the same way that I am? And it was very hard trying to really get through that. It really, it really about split us up. Like we really felt not made it. And that's up until even after Chant being born. Even after we had children, it was a tough road staying together, even after we had kids, because so much damage I feel like had taken place. You know, we were just kind of moving in the, you know, in the motions. We were just going with it at that point. But I don't know. It, when when it started to get better, actually, it was after Champ's surgery where we really began to connect again and really be, began to become one again. But I think, again, that threat of possibly losing champ in surgery, you know, it really made us refocus ourselves and our attention and really to get things back on track. But it's, everything's always been centered around our children, you know. It was really when champ had his surgery, when, and so, you know, we both were like, okay, let's we're going to do this. Let's really make it a point to really, you know, keep our family together. Because one, we've been together since I was 14 years old. I'll be 33 this year. I've been with this man since I was 14. Like I literally grew up with this man. So it was like so much happens. And I'm just like, what? You know, where do I turn? Which way are you going? Which way are you turning? So it was just really, oh my God. So when we got to the point of after champ surgery, we did some counseling I really start looking, in, you know, at myself, doing a lot of self-reflection because I felt a lot of it was on me, you know, and how I valued myself and, and my relationship with God. 
So I really had to do a lot of soul searching. After I began to do that, it kind of just start falling into place. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that kind of how that went, you know, with my, my uh, faith and then how I went with my husband. And it got to the point where I began to really began to fall in love with each other all over again. And last year, which was absolutely amazing, we did our vow renewal on the beach in Clearwater. And it was absolutely amazing. Like, it was amazing. And I really felt like everything that we had been through was worth it because we were at such a point that was even better than it was before. So it was a journey. It's been a journey, but I, we made it. Like, <laughs> we made it, Erica. Like, we made it together. We made it. We made awesome. It. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us about your journey now. Like, where are you in your journey to having children and having more children? We, um, I don't know if we're going to continue to try just because it has been a journey. And, you know, Champ's five, he's going to kindergarten tomorrow. So we're like, you know, do we want to start over? Do we want, really want to try again? We're not taking any precaution for it not to happen, but I'm really just leaving it in God's hands because if he's the fit, it will happen. So I'm not going to like try to do his work for him. <laughs> awesome. Yes. We're going to let God do his work. Amen. So I completely understand. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were actively trying. That's the reason why I asked. <laughs> not like purposely, no, but if it happens, it's very welcome. But yeah, no, we're not. That's not my focus. My focus now is really just to be here for my family, continue to be here and connect with my husband and honor God and be able to to help those women who feel like they're alone. I remember going through when I was, you know, when it was very fresh and even here, you know, last year, like I do, you just feel, you, you feel broken. You feel, you feel less of a woman. You just feel I remember feeling guilty. I remember feeling ashamed. I remember feeling all these different emotions. And I felt like I was doing it by myself. And I'm like, am I the only one going through this? You know, but I noticed as I began to share my story and talk about it, like I wasn't. I saw how many women or couples experienced it. And I felt like, okay, so I'm not the only one that's alone. But God continued to want me to, you know, share my story. After I was delivered on... 12, 5 of 17, and it was four days before the twins' birthday, their eighth birthday. And I remember laying in bed with the boys, because my husband, he works evenings. I was here with the boys, and I remember Erica laying in bed, and this feeling came over me, right? Mm -hmm. It was like a warm sensation. At first, I didn't know what was going on, and I'm like, okay, should I be worried? Am I having a panic attack? Like, what's going on here? But as I got out of my head, I felt like a complete peace, and I remember, like, it was like literally taking my first breath. It felt like I had been holding my breath for all these years, and I was just now able to breathe again. And I remember literally, I was like... (laughs) And now I did just that and I started to cry, but my tears was warm. So in that moment, I knew, I said, God, I know what you're doing. I know that you're delivering me and you're delivering me of the pain, the guilt and the sorrow that accompanies me when the twin anniversary is approaching. Erica, when I say when 12 nine came last year, I was at complete peace. I was at complete peace. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel anything. I felt more joy than anything. Wow. So that so then after that experience, like I could breathe like for the first time in nine years, eight, nine years. And so God said, Ashley, it's time for you to write your book. Because he would tell me that he want me to write this book, but I'm like, I'm not even done going through this. So I'm gonna write this, yeah. this conversation back and forth, right? So so after he delivered me on the fifth, he said, Now you have your ending to this, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, January first. I begin my book. I begin my book. And so this, that, from just that experience alone has what led me to start talking about my story, start sharing my story. And, you know, and I've had so many women already approach me or or message me or get in contact with me just for me being brave to talking about it. Because a lot of women don't talk about it, Erica. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I I, I hate that. I I want, because I feel like the more you talk about it or you share, you heal better. You heal, you heal. You know, you kind of give yourself some relief from trying to hold it all in or try to carry that weight by yourself. Because it's a lot of weight. And it's not easy 
So talk about parenting after loss. So how have you parented your two boys and how have you and your husband parented your boys since you've had, you know, multiple recurrent losses? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it makes us cherish our boys more. I feel like we don't take moments for granted. Like I said, me and my husband really started to reconnect after Tim's first birthday. It was when he turned one and he had surgery. I really feel like we put our all into our family, into each other after his first birthday. But we cherish the boys like no other. And I feel like we're a little bit more protective. I do feel like we're more protective just because, you know, what was what we lost. So I feel like we just we're more protective and I feel like we just cherish moments just that much more just because of you know we was once told that we couldn't even have kids or that it would be hard for me to carry them you know we cherish them more as the trees continue to change color and the weather turns from muggy to crisp The anticipation of fall and winter and the holiday season is here. We see it in the stores where they have already begun with the Christmas and Thanksgiving preparations and decorations. And for me, like you, the pain of grief tends to surface with great intensity during these milestone events. Birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays are typical events that are associated with our grief journey. So please do not let the holidays go by without learning how to navigate them properly. Join me on November 13th, November 27th, and December 11th, where I will teach you three ways on how to navigate grief during the holidays. In this webinar, we'll learn how to navigate grief during the holidays, how to deal with families and friends during the holidays, because we know how stressful that could be. And then also, how are we going to honor our angels these days? All three dates are the same webinar, so you have three different dates to choose from and sign up for whichever one that you want. If not, you can catch the replay by going to bit.ly slash navigating grief go to bit.ly forward slash navigating grief to sign up do not let these holidays pass you by without knowing how to navigate your grief properly so you mentioned the book so where what what should we look forward to with your book um that's coming out next year it was it literally will be a collection of stories of my events that occurred during the last eight years. Kind of talks about just me and Walls, the beginning of us, and then you know it talks about the loss with the twins and how how our marriage kind of disconnected, you know, going through the loss and then also the other loss that we experienced. And then it goes into more in depth about Champ's story and then also more in depth about William's story and then my deliverance that I experienced on 12.5. So it's a kind of a collection of a little bit of all the events into one, but more in depth. And I'm really hoping to be able to, again, to inspire women of like I experienced so much so quickly, but I also was able to be delivered with my faith and with my, you know, with my faith and being able to become one again with my husband and don't be labeled. Don't, don't let no one ever label you and someone tell you that you can't have something regardless of what's happened in the past or what they, what the medical doctors may see. God has the final word, you know? So it really kind of goes into all that. Also, we look forward to it, and I may have to tap you to bring you back on the podcast at the beginning of the year to talk more about it once you're once it's coming out. What resources or tools did you use to help you in your healing journey? Prayer. <laughs> Prayer was a big one. That was my number one. It would be nights. I would literally go to bed and crying every night praying because I knew nobody could help me through what I was going through except for God, not even my husband. Because he didn't know how to help me. He didn't know how to help himself. So one one thing that I did constantly every day was pray, pray, pray. I read a lot of books about pregnancy loss. One of the books that I read was a book called Empty Arms. And that was a very good book that I read. It also made me feel like I was not alone. 
I meditated a lot. I, I meditated. I meditated a lot to help me keep my mind in a positive mindset and not be so hard on myself like I was. I journaled a lot. I wrote my feelings down a lot because, again, I felt like I was alone. And I felt like I needed to get my emotions out. I needed to get them out one, one way or another. So I would write my journal. So even now, even when I was writing my book, I kind of went back to some of my journal entries and kind of looked at, you know, what I wrote. And I could kind of use some of that to put it in my book. And I was able to, which was very helpful in getting everything out. Let's see, I journaled a lot, I prayed, I meditated, and I also shared my story with other people. I shared my story, yeah, I shared my story with other people, whoever would listen, because it got to a point where, you know, I feel like I couldn't talk a lot to my family members because I didn't know what to say. Like, you know, some co-workers or uh, my sister, she hadn't had a loss, but she would relate, you know, she would sympathize with me. But I shared my story. I really feel like that was one of the best things that really helped me. Because I had a co-worker, actually it was last year, end of last year, and I told her I had shared my story with her, and she knew that the twins' anniversary was coming up, and she was very thoughtful, Erica, and she got me this angel, and on this angel, it had the twins' named engraved on it. Oh my God, like, she acknowledged my kids, like, it is so important for them to be acknowledged to me, and she acknowledged them. And she went and found their names and got it engraved. And I just like, I was, I was in awe. Cause I was like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. Like it meant the world to me. All because I shared my story. All because I shared my story. Awesome. Sharing my story, that helped me a lot. Cause people would, would be able to relate or just be that, you know, give me that shoulder that I would need at that moment. So yeah, sharing my story was a big one. Awesome. So, where, what encouraging words can you leave the mom that's listening that is looking to try again? Be be positive. Stay positive no matter what. Have faith. Pray about it. And know that, know in your heart and believe that your baby will come forth and healthy. No, like you, like you know your name, that your baby will come forth no matter what. And I say that because that's what I had to do about William. Because I was nervous, I was terrified to try again after that last miscarriage. And my doctor, she was like, "Well, do you want to try again?" I said, "No." <laughs> but then after I left her, I said, "You know what? I'm not going to discourage myself or keep myself from what God has for me and my husband." So I'm going to not be labeled by another doctor that said that it would be hard for me to carry. And this was a specialist that told me that. And um, just be be faithful. Be faithful and just believe that your baby will come forth and your baby will come forth. Or I guarantee your baby will come forth. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So where can we find you on social Social media, um, uh, Instagram and Facebook at Ashley K. Pittman. I have a website that's going to be launched here shortly, but that will also be out on my social media where I can be reached. Uh, you can email me. My email is through my social media, or I, you can DM me as well if you have any questions or just want to reach out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being on the podcast and sharing your story with us. No problem. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I pray that this show was inspirational and a blessing to you. For show notes, visit ericaandmcafee.com forward slash podcast. Please join us in our offline discussions in our private Facebook group by going to sistersinloss.com. If you're listening in Apple Podcasts, please rate and subscribe to us and leave us a five-star review. I pray that you all have a blessed week. Keep the faith and I'll talk to you next Wednesday.